When the Taliban overran Kabul in mid-August, seizing power for the second time, the years-old mystery over the whereabouts of the movement's supreme leader, Hibatullah Akhundzada, deepened further. Whether the elderly cleric is alive or dead is something many Afghans are uncertain about, and even the most dedicated analysts have doubts about who was really leading the group. On October 30, two months after Taliban spokesman insisted Akhundzada was alive and well in Kandahar, Rumors swirled in the southern city that the emir had delivered a speech at the Quranic school or madrasa. Taliban officials gave their stamp of authenticity to his appearance at the Hakimiya madrasa, releasing a crackling audio recording lasting more than 10 minutes. May God reward the oppressed people of Afghanistan who fought the infidels and the oppressors for 20 years. In tones and aged and echoing voice said to be that of Akunzada. His public profile had previously been largely limited to annual written messages released for Islamic holidays. In one of the poorest suburbs of Kandahar, between a litter strewn stream and dirt track, two Taliban fighters stand guard in front of the Hakimiya Madrasa's blue and white gate. It has become something of a magnet since October 30, attracting curious, albeit respectfully distant, crowds of Taliban supporters. When the supreme leader visited, he was armed and accompanied by three security guards. The madrasa's head of security, Masum Shakrullah, told AFP. Even cell phones and sound recorders were not allowed into the venue, he added. One of the students, Mohammed 19, said we all were watching him and were just crying. Asking if he could confirm that it was definitely a Kunzada, Mohammed said he and his peers were so overjoyed that they forgot to watch his face. The need for Taliban leaders to keep vanishingly low profiles became especially pronounced in the last decade of war as deadly US drone strikes multiplied. Akhundzada rose to the top spot after one such strike killed his predecessor Mullah Akhtar Manzoor in 2016. He quickly secured the backing of Al-Qaeda chief Ayman al-Sawahiri, who called him the Emir of the Faithful. This endorsement by Osama bin Laden's hair helped seal his jihadist credentials with the Taliban's longtime allies. The Taliban have released just one photograph of Akhundzada five years ago when he took the group's reins. The Supreme Leader's appearance scorched rumours and propaganda about his death, said Maulvi Said Ahmad, who heads the madrasa where Akhundzada reportedly appeared. Officials of the ousted Afghan regime and many Western analysts are sceptical, believing that Akhundzada died years ago. For them, the madrasa visit was a carefully choreographed deception. There is a precedent. The Taliban pretended founder Mullah Omar was alive for two years following his death in 2013. Akhundzada was killed alongside his brother in a suicide attack in Quetta, Pakistan about three years ago, the source believes. This theory, sometimes with slight variations, is seen as credible by several foreign intelligence agencies. In Panjwai, a district on a vast arid plateau near Kandahar, everyone knows of the Akhundzadas, a line of respected theologians. The emir was born in the village of Spurwan. At the time of the Soviet invasion in 1979, fighting broke out in the village and Hibatullah left for Pakistan, Niyamatullah, a young fighter and former student of the Supreme Leader told. After this first move to Pakistan, Akhundzada became a respected scholar and earned the title Sheikh al-Hadith, a distinction reserved for the most eminent scholars of the Prophet Muhammad's sayings. In the early 1990s, as the Islamist insurgency was taking hold in the wake of the Soviet occupation, Akhundzada then in his 30s returned to the village. He would hold consultations with visitors from the city and from Pakistan, remembers Abdul Qayyum, a 65-year-old villager. According to snippets from his official biography, his rise was meteoric after the Taliban took power in Kabul in 1996. After running the local madrasa, he became a judge at Kandahar Provincial Court, then head of the military court in Nangahar in eastern Afghanistan until 2000. By the time the Taliban were forced from power in late 2001, he was heading Kabul's military court. Akhundzada then fled to Pakistan, finding sanctuary in Quetta. His mastery of Islamic law made him the head of the Taliban's shadow justice system and acclaimed trainer of a whole generation of fighters who graduated through Quetta. Akhundzada was the center of gravity for the Taliban, keeping the group intact, one Pakistan-based Taliban member told. According to the source, who says he has met the Supreme Leader three times the last time in 2020, Akhundzada does not use modern technology. He prefers to make phone calls on landlines and communicates via letters to the Taliban officials who now make up the government and with whom he retains a strong rapport. He would have given the green light to the final offensive against the old regime and kept track of operations from Kandahar, where he had already been discreetly installed for several months, the Pakistani source said. 
The continued fear of elimination even after the end of the war with the Americans explains Akhundzada's continued low profile, several Taliban sources say. And if he were already dead, a regional security source said concerns over the rival Sunni extremist group the Islamic State's local chapter would in part explain the Taliban concealing the news as any such announcement could prompt defections. If they announce Akhundzada is no more and we are looking for a new emir, it will factionalize the Taliban and the ISK would take advantage, he said. Despite the speculation, the Taliban insists nothing is untoward. The emir is leading in an orderly manner, a spokesman told, adding it is not necessary for him to appear publicly. News Desk, Global.